gRPC, GraphQL, or REST. Which one is the best one for your project? And why is that even a question? Because the wrong decision can cause long-lasting problems. That's why you, as a backend engineer, need to know the particularities of each style. Watch can be overwhelming. The good news is that we can systematize the pros and cons of each style. We can also have predefined use cases where one strategy might be better than another one. And all that systematized information can help you to find the answer you are looking for. And that is exactly what we'll be doing in this video. But first, let's talk about why we are talking about GraphQL, REST, and gRPC. Because in this video, we'll focus on request response APIs. APIs where given server will have a client that can perform a request and receive a response. And for that case, gRPC, REST, and GraphQL tend to be on the top of the list when you are looking for a style to approach your API. What raises the question, which one is better? And I honestly hate to give this answer, but as always, it depends. But we'll see in this video what it depends on. So let's start with REST. REST APIs are built around resources. They take advantage of the HTTP protocol perfectly by using verbs, by using methods. And nowadays with JSON objects, the REST API with resources exposing JSON objects has become the default way of doing things. But there are some limitations here. So let's see the pros and cons. REST is extremely simple to understand, it's extremely simple to build, it's extremely simple to use. When you expose a REST API, it's quite easy to start consuming it. Also, due to the way that it's built on top of the HTTP protocol, it simplifies our lives in terms of caching. And one important part of REST APIs is that due to the evolution of the ecosystem, nowadays it's quite easy to find tooling and integrations that are built around the REST APIs they are expecting those type of endpoints, those type of responses, that type of structure. You can use things like an open API definition to generate code, all of those things. There's a huge ecosystem built on top of REST APIs. As a concern, if, for example, you work in a company that delivers an API and has a front-end team building something like a web application or a mobile application, there's a coupling between those two. Why? To keep evolving the client, usually you need things from the backend because the backend will be quite strict. So I give you things in one way, you will have things on that way. One of the examples is the classical problem of overfetching or underfetching. What is that? Is when you call an API and you can receive more data or less data than the one that you are looking for. So if you receive more data, there's a problem in terms of bandwidth. If you receive less data, you might need to perform several round trips to the server to get every single thing that you need. Yes, I'm aware that you can build your REST APIs by providing things like asking for the fields, querying for more details, limiting the response. You can do that, but let's face it, it's not the default way that we tend to build REST APIs and that brings extra effort on top of what we do. And even then tends to be quite limiting. For example, if you have a master detail structure, it might be quite hard to perform what we are looking for. Another classic problem of REST APIs is that since they are built around the verbs, the put, the post, the get, and that aligns perfectly with CRUD, create, read, update, delete. Now it raises the question, how should I model into my API? How should I design an API? that test things like, I want an operation to deactivate a user. That feels unnatural in an API like a REST API that is built around the resources alone. And that is the perfect segue to the next strategy that is gRPC. gRPC is one way to put in practice RPC API. And what's the advantage of an RPC API? Is that it works kind of like an endpoint per action, like if you have access to a class with methods, but that class is in fact an API and each method that you have modeled for each case is the different actions that you can perform through that API. So we can say that RPC is kind of like calling a package that you have installed, but instead of doing it and it's there in memory, 
what you are doing is doing that call over the network. So in simple terms, it's kind of like if I'm using an API, like if I was using another class. And by the way, the G in gRPC used to stand for Google. Nowadays, I don't know anymore what it stands for. It's one of those things that the name changes according to what you want. Before we keep going, let me tell you something. And you don't want to skip this, otherwise you will regret it so much. Have you heard about NDC conferences? I think so. So you might know that NDC conferences are amazing. There's a lot of great speakers there. It's an excellent event. And the good news is that the NDC team was kindly enough to offer me a ticket that I can give away to one of you. And the ticket is a three-day conference pass for free for NDC Porto 2024. So if you want to come to Porto, if you want to be there with me and other excellent speakers, the only thing that you need to do is to go to the link in the description, leave your email there, and in September, I will run the giveaway to find out who's the lucky winner. And if you are that person, we can meet in Porto in October. So go there, leave your email there, and then please make sure that you say thanks to NDC for this opportunity. Now, let's get back to the video. So gRPC, there's a lot of pros and cons. One of the biggest advantages of gRPC is exactly that one, that I can build methods specific for what I want. So that use case of deactivating a user is quite trivial. And by the fact that it feels like you are calling a different class without thinking too much about what you are doing, it makes gRPC one option with an excellent developer experience. But also one of the most interesting aspects of gRPC is the fact that it's built with performance in mind. So high performance, low latency are things that are in the heart of gRPC. And also if you are looking for streaming to stream data bidirectionally, gRPC is perfect for that. However, there are some concerns with gRPC. While with the REST API, you can call the API, read the response, anyone can understand what JSON is saying, everyone after understanding what is a resource can read the URI and understand what you are talking about. With gRPC, you will not have something that is human readable. It can be a concern depending on the type of experience that you, you want to provide to your consumers. Also, gRPC suffers from some of the same problems as REST. If I, w I have a team that needs to get more data or less data, they still depend on me of, on providing a different method, a different way to access that data. So I can build specific actions that will provide a set of data. And by doing that, I can limit the problem that I used to have in REST. But even then, it's not perfect since the consumer, the client, can have the option to decide, I want this, I want that. And another concerning factor about gRPC when you are taking a decision, it might be the browser support. It's quite limited, so that might put some use cases out of the way right away. And what about GraphQL? GraphQL is a graph query language. It's not a, an architecture style, it's a query language, in fact. So the GraphQL defines a language to specify queries to an API. So on that case that we have seen on the REST API where I would access to the user's resource, get a user, and that would give me access to the first name, surname, email, and so on. If I'm building an UI and I only want the first name to put in a given box on the home page, I can perform that query with GraphQL. And that will give me a response specific with that data. This makes GraphQL perfect for fighting the problem of overfetching and underfetching. Since now my clients don't depend on me to expose different endpoints, different operations, in order to provide them what they are looking for. And also, since I have this powerful query language, now I can reduce the, the chat happening between my client and my server because I can get every single thing that I want in a single round trip, for example. However, GraphQL can be hard to learn and that makes it hard to get it, hard to put in, in practice. Designing a good schema with GraphQL might be hard. And it's something that there's a lot of people that are not familiar with when compared to REST. So when you onboard the new team member, 
it might be a problem the the time that it takes to have the necessary experience to take good decisions when designing a schema and maintaining GraphQL. There's another concern that is regarding versioning. It becomes a bit more challenging than when compared to the other two approaches. So if we distill all that information and we try to come up with an answer like, what's the typical use cases to use REST, GraphQL, or gRPC, we'll come up with something like this. If we are talking about the REST APIs, they will be perfect for public APIs. If you are looking for simplicity, following standards, having a standard definition of what your API should be, they are perfect for that. And also I have to say that if you want to go to market with a new API and you need to be fast delivering with quality, the better approach will be likely with REST. So let's talk about gRPC. gRPC will be perfect if you want to build applications that are high performant and with low latency. Also, it tends to be an excellent use case for server-to-server -server communication, something like microservices. But please keep in mind that this doesn't address the problem of coupling. So a lot of cases in microservices, you might want to go with messaging instead of building APIs like these ones that we are talking about in this. Video. Other thing about gRPC is when you need to have streaming of data in your applications. So if you want real-time communication, gRPC is the option to go. And what about GraphQL? If you need flexibility in terms of querying the data on your system, GraphQL is the way to go. So that means that in applications that have a lot of things going on and you are building a new UI and you need to perform several types of um, queries to your server and you need your team to move fast without depending on the backend team, the GraphQL tends to be an excellent option. And if you do that and you are building something like mobile applications, for example, if you are building applications to be used in places where the internet connectivity is not best, for example. So if you have those bandwidth requirements, GraphQL is also an excellent approach. So that might be a quick reference of typical use cases for each type of API request response API. But it's important to say that even then in your systems, you can mix and match them. You might have something like in your REST API, now you want to build an endpoint specific for querying. Why not taking a look into GraphQL for that? Your API needs to communicate with a backend service so maybe you use gRPC for that. So this is not a something that you'll go with a single solution for the complete system, but depending on the use case that you are implementing at the time, you might need to go with one style or with another. And now that you know that, and you came up to the conclusion that what you want is a REST API, I think you need to watch this video right here, where I will share with you four simple tips to build a REST API with a great design.